real quick, if you guys want to win a free airsoft gun, stick around to the end of the video to find out how. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're checking out an airsoft gun that I think is definitely one of the better contenders on the market for a sub $200 airsoft gun that can get you out on the field playing right away. This is the Gen 2 Classic Army EC1 with their ECS gearbox inside. I'll tell you, off the bat, picking this up, I was impressed. I remember checking out the uh, kind of the, one of the older skirmish series classic army M4s and it wasn't that impressive. So when I picked this up out of the box and actually took it out to use it the other day, this was phenomenal. It's such a step up from what classic army was putting out even just a couple of years ago as their skirmish series gun. So this is really a great gun out of the box. I was impressed. They run about $185 at foxairsoft.com. They did send this over in a mystery box for me to check out. So now I can take a deeper look at it. Take a quick view of what the gun comes with then we can go over everything about this gun for the most part this gun comes with just about everything you need to actually get out on the field right away and play there are some things i can recommend that would help improve your experience but we'll cover those things later it comes with two rail covers it does help to cover up the uh, the rails on the side they're not sharp or anything but it's just kind of a nice textured feel all coast comes with a vertical grip I like these, they're just, they're kind of standard, they're pretty plain. Thankfully, Classic Army does include a bag of 0.25 gram BBs. Two fives are just fine. I ran two eights in my testing in this gun and it performed exceptionally well. So I was very happy with that. So some decent quality two fives. Nunchuck 9.6 volt battery. Eh, let's see, this is a 1600 milliamp hour. So it's probably not gonna last you quite all day. You probably wanna pick up a spare battery just in case. I do recommend a 7.4 volt lithium polymer battery for you guys that might be a little more experienced, but a nickel metal hydrate like this will work just fine. All comes, also comes with a basic charger. I do recommend getting a smart charger instead so it cuts off when it's done charging instead of letting this continually to charge and possibly damaging your battery. Most airsoft guns do come with a cleaning rod. This one's pretty long just in case. I think they just probably arbitrary length for any airsoft gun, but nice to have it all the same. 300 round high cap mag, probably pick up a few more of these if you're a new player. If you're not a new player, you probably have a zillion of these laying around. Uh, I like high caps myself just because how many people play on the field out here, which is Nighthawk airsoft. I tend to have to have a lot more ammo just for how many people are out there to shoot at. Although I do like mid caps just the same. It just depends on what game type I'm playing. Also get a basic user manual, things like uh, do not cut your battery with scissors, kind of common sense, but still worth a read if you're new to airsoft. Now on to the airsoft gun. This is the Classic Army EC1. We're gonna start with the stock and kind of move our way forward. It does come with a crane style stock. It's got a little bit of wobble. It's not a big deal. Most airsoft guns with M4 stocks have that. A little bit of electrical tape will fix that for you. A couple of tabs you can push in on the back and pull out the mini type to me a connector. This is your battery compartment. Can fit a 7.4 LiPo very easily. If you really want, you can run an 11.1 on this. I feel it's tuned relatively well, and you'll see that in the internal portion in just a little bit here. And it can probably handle an 11 one if you want, but I do recommend for your airsoft to last longer, a 9.6 or a 7.4 volt LiPo battery. It is a telescoping stock, so of course you've got plenty of positions here. I like mine at the second notch position. It just feels more comfortable, more compact. A lot of people like it farther out, but to each their own. Just in front of that, you've got a couple of sling points on either side. It is a sl metal sling plate that fits just between the body and the buffer tube. Saves you about 10 bucks from having to buy one aftermarket, so definitely a plus there. The pistol grip on this gun is a little bit different. It's Classic Army's own design. It's almost kind of, kind of like a dimpling uh, pattern on the sides and ribbing on the front and back. I find it fairly comfortable grips pretty well and we'll talk about some of the design features on the internal portion of this review shortly. You do get flip up front and rear sights. They are metal. Definitely a plus there. I do like these. Windage uh, adjustment on the back and elevation on the front and you got two peep apertures on the rear as well for long and short range shooting. You can put those down just by the press of a button very simply. The fact that it includes these is a pretty big deal to me. I like having some iron sights just in case for some reason my battery dies in my dot sight or God forbid it takes a BB and I have to take it off or something along those lines. It does have a fake bolt on the right and you can actually pull back the charging handle and reveal your hop up here under the fake bolt here. It is an ambi charging handle, so it's got the release on both sides, which I really like. Not a lot of airsoft guns, actually very, very few have this feature. I've got this on my Real Steel Colt 
and I really, really like having the ambi charging handle. It's very, very nice. Under the fake bolt here is your hop-up, and it is a rotary style polymer hop-up. A lot of companies are going to this. They're just, they tend to hold their position a little bit better, and they tend to be a little bit easier to adjust. Moving up a little bit, the handguard is actually very solid. Some of the older versions of this gun, for some reason, just they had a kind of a wobbly handguard, or at least the ones I worked on from clients did. This is much more solid much more firm and doesn't creak or wobble it at all. Even the barrel is pretty well affixed and they did a really good job on it. Again, it does come with a rail cover set and a vertical grip. You want to install that on the front here. The flash hider, big old orange plastic flash hider, does have threading for Classic Army's quick detach suppressor on here. So if you wanted to thread that on real quick, you can do that very simply. Those aren't terribly expensive and they're kind of a cool uh, touch that they, you can just throw them right on the gun without a problem. So that's a plus right there. With all the externals out of the way, let's go ahead and put this on the tech table and see where this gun really shines, which is on the internals. I love this pistol grip, very comfortable. I love the little dimpled texture on it. And I do really appreciate the kind of trapdoor design the motor plate has. It kind of hinges here and there's no two screws holding it like the standard Marui design of way old. Instead, it just hinges open and you push this in and it's very simple. This is not a design where it's gonna, you're gonna bump it and it's gonna open up in the field. You really have to deliberately, deliberately push this inward and open it up and it makes Diagnosing small issues real simple. So if your motor pin falls off during gameplay or something like that, you can just go out to the safe area, pop it back on without having to have a screwdriver and get going again. Let's start with the motor here. You can tell big classic army sticker on it, nice blue cage. The shimming on it is okay. It's got a little bit of wiggle on there. Could be a little bit better, but it's definitely pretty acceptable. The pinion on it is an O-type pinion. Easy to find pinions for. The torque on it feels reasonable. It's pretty stock, so I can't complain at all. And the rate of fire I was getting actually with it was really surprising with just a 7.4 volt battery. And to top that off, a uh, Tamiya to Dean's adapter on that 7.4. So that can affect rate of fire a little bit, but I was still getting a really snappy response and a great rate of fire out of this motor. The hop-up on this gun is a polymer rotary style. Everyone is really pushing for that rotary style hop-up. It's kind of a little bit different than that standard TM design where it's got the dial on the side and the three gears, and it's definitely a step up from that. It's more consistent. I feel it's like it's easier to adjust. And this particular one is very positive clicking. It's pretty, actually very stiff to the point where on the field, I actually had to take my car keys out and adjust it that way because I was going to bend a fingernail doing it, and that really doesn't feel too good. So. Very, very solid hop-up. Seems to get a really good air seal. The barrel on this is a brass 6.03 barrel out of the box, and the groupings definitely show it. My testing of the gun out on the field got really, really consistent groupings, especially at a distance. With heavy ammo, this thing really performs extremely well. Little details, the crowning on this guy is pretty deep. It's at least probably five or six millimeters. I don't see a lot of crowning on barrel de barrels these days, so the fact that this has a pretty good crown on it is definitely a plus in my eyes. Onto the gearbox. I know this is what you guys all want to see. And just for reference, I actually have a rather old Classic Army gearbox shell here. And you can see how much Classic Army has changed, moving from the six millimeter all the way up to their nine mil bushings. Uh, very standard, older gearbox. I believe that one's from right around 2011. Probably about eight or nine years old now. And Classic Army has really evolved quite a bit in that time. Just some small details, you can see their flat facing trigger here. A lot of companies are really going to that. I'm glad Classic Army did because I really like the feel of these. They're just more comfortable and they feel a little more correct to press with your trigger finger. And they're kind of a speedier feel, I suppose, as well. You can see offhand, nine milliliter solid bushings, definitely a plus. A lot of companies go with bearings and such. I think bearings are great. Uh, they're very smooth, but they're not quite as durable. Bushings do tend to last longer for sure. This is a quick change spring guide gearbox. You got the quick change spring guide in the back. Keep in mind though, that you do have to actually remove the gearbox shell from the body to swap the spring out. So it's a little more of a convenience for like a full teching job instead of on the field swapping your, your spring or something along those lines. They did try and radius the front of the gearbox a little bit. I feel like it could have done been done a little bit better. So I'm glad they attempted it, but 
Yeah, I'm gonna give it about a 50% out of 100 there. It's kind of a, it's kind of a half job, so might want to touch up on that if you guys are gonna take this gun apart and do some teching on it yourselves. Removing the spring guide out the back of the gun here, I did actually have to remove the top screw here because it was a little tight getting the spring guide out, so it took a little bit of effort there. The spring guide itself, plastic shaft, metal base, works just fine and has a little bit of a uh, small washer on there. The spring is rather long. I'd probably say it's about. Oh, an M100. All right, I have all the screws out here. Just a quick note, all the screws had a pretty decent amount of Loctite on them. They were a little difficult to get out, so it's definitely a plus. Your screws aren't just going to randomly back out on you when you're taking your gun apart. Sometimes that sector gear likes to stick there. Just offhand, everything looks actually really well lubricated. Um, the tappet plate, the cylinder, the gears, so that's a definite plus offhand. The air compression system here. I can just start by looking at the cylinder. It is a kind of a aluminum cylinder, a little bit thinner. I feel like it's, you see these on a lot of guns. They're probably less expensive to make than brass, I would imagine. The port here is right around the place you'd expect for a standard length M4, so about a 360 millimeter barrel. Uh, the fact that you've got a little more air behind a shorter barrel kind of helps with that heavier ammo a little bit. Might help with jewel creep, it kind of varies. But I do like the fact that if I want, I can go ahead and throw a longer inner barrel in this gun, maybe throw a suppressor over that and still have plenty of air volume to push that BB out without a problem. Let's take the nozzle and tap a plate off here. The tap a plate, I've seen this design on Classic Army a little bit, it's kind of a bigger fin there than normal. Fairly flexible, nothing too special. The nozzle does have a little O-ring in there, so definite plus. It sits pretty well on the cylinder head, it actually gets a rather good seal. Uh, better than a lot of stock guns I've seen out there. The piston, standard piston, it's got the, the metal lug back there so it's not bearing. Uh, second to last tooth is not removed. It's got little cuts here, so I suppose that's a plus. Um, could probably correct AOE on it. I put a couple hundred rounds through it and you can kind of see a little bit of wear start to show there. Uh, so that over time will kind of pick up without angle of engagement correction. But it still seems like a pretty strong piston. Uh, it's definitely a little bit different than their old yellow pistons that Classic Army used to use. The cylinder head is pretty tight inside the cylinder actually. Single o-ring, uh, moderately soft damper. So pretty standard there. Let's move on to the rest of the gearbox here. The real highlight of this gun to me is the internal MOSFET. I really, really like the way companies are going with these things. You don't have to go spend a hundred plus dollars on a really nice MOSFET because you get most of those features already built into a gun. And for a sub $200 gun to have features like this is incredible. 10 years ago, this would have been unheard of. And nowadays it's becoming slowly a standard thing for lower cost guns like this, under $200, to have really high-end features like this. So this has programmability from your standard burst to full auto, to all kinds of things from semi-only to uh, three-round burst, even five-round burst, which is really something in a low-cost gun like this. So the fact that this is here is fantastic. It does have this little center here, and you can see the little magnet that's sitting there in one of the little, uh, little holes on the sector gear. It kind of tells it, you know, when to when to stop exactly. From what I can see, the gears are actually pretty good quality. The shimming is rather good on them. So the fact that Classic Army does a really good shim job out of the box, plus a MOSFET and a fairly good compression system, it's really hard to go wrong with this gun internally. The the internals are very very solid. Uh, sector to layer chip there, which is definitely a plus. It can help with higher rates of fire and feeding and such like that. And like I mentioned earlier, the greasing on the gears is fantastic. So no issues there. Now, after checking out the internals of the gun and kind of combining it with all the externals we talked about, for under $200, this is a fantastic deal. I am really impressed with what Classic Army is doing for under 200 bucks at that price point. You get a MOSFET gearbox. You get a solid gun that sounds great out of the box, performs well. The range and accuracy were actually really fantastic, and I, I'm really impressed with it. I really can't say enough good things about it. This is one of the few guns I'm gonna give a 10 out of 10 to. For the money you're paying for it and the quality and the value you're getting out of it, it is definitely a 10 out of 10 in my book. Now, if you guys wanna win a free airsoft gun, go to the link in the description for the Fox Airsoft free airsoft gun giveaway. They're always giving away a free airsoft gun or a mystery box of some sort. So it takes two seconds go enter that link in the description. Also, if you like, go check out my Instagram. I just created one. I've got a ton of cool pictures on there of airsoft guns and, I con and I'm constantly uploading more. So link in the description for that as well. 
If you guys would like to purchase this airsoft gun or similar airsoft guns on foxairsoft.com, I've got a link in the description for this and some other cool stuff. So go check that out. Thanks for watching guys. and I'll see you in another review in the near future.